All right, guys, today we're talking about the pros and cons of shadow boxing with weights in your hands. So shadow boxing with weights is not my favorite. Um, you know, it can change up the technique and your timing, which are both very important in boxing. However, a lot of people like to do it. They think it's gonna increase their speed or their power, but it doesn't impact it the way that you would think. So go ahead and straighten your arm out here, Coleman. So now see there, what, what this is doing is actually keeping you from dragging your hand back. So it's putting that pressure, the gravity down, so it's building up endurance because it's a really, people have a really bad habit of throwing their jab or their right hand and dragging it back. Go ahead and show them a jab and dragging it back, Coleman. See how it's coming low right there? So it's actually building that stamina up on the shoulder to keep you in a good habit of bringing your punches back high. The other thing that I really like about shadow boxing with the dumbbells is the fact that you're decelerating more weight. So it's really strengthening that bicep snap at the end and of course putting that strain on your rotator cuff and your rear deltoids to slow it down. Now one thing I don't like about shadow boxing with weights, probably the most dangerous thing, is people that are always locking their arms out at the end of the range of motion. Go ahead, Coleman. Yep, see, you want to actually have a soft elbow. That way you have a little bit of space left at the end to decelerate your punch. If you're, yep, if you're in the habit of locking your arm out and you miss a punch in a fight, where is all that acceleration going to go? What's going to slow it down? It's going to put a lot of strain on your rotator cuff right at the end of that. So we want to be throwing with a soft elbow with these dumbbells, making sure you're creating a habit in case you miss your opponent so your bicep can recruit and help decelerate your arm along with your rotator cuff. The, the other thing is you're used to locking it out with the dumbbells in your hand. You're going to put a lot of strain on your bicep tendon. Show them where that bicep tendon will get sore at here, Coleman. Yep, right there. So you don't want, you don't want to be recruiting that bicep. It's going to get sore. It's going to get inflamed if you're used to locking your arms out. So also the other thing I want to talk to you about is the weight of you should shadow box with. So Coleman is using a three pound dumbbell. I think that's really good for maybe a 154, 160, 175 pound fighter. A three pound dumbbell is three times as heavy as a sparring glove, which is 16 ounces. You know, a guy that's 147 or lighter, I think maybe should use a two, that's plenty enough. 175 guy that's really strong, a 200, maybe a heavyweight could potentially use a four. You know, the lighter the dumbbell you use, the more of the range of motion you can go through. Um, Coleman has been doing about 80%, maybe sometimes 70% of the way through the range of motion here. I don't think you should be going 90 or 100% through the range of motion. Like I said, it's going to put a lot of stress on your bicep tendon at the end of that range of motion. If you're using fours, of course, you need to probably lower it down even more. I don't think fours are necessary. I think a three or a two is, um, is plenty. Like I said, it's not my favorite thing, but I just wanted to kind of cover this because I know a lot of people like to shadow box with the dumbbells in their hands. I hope this has uh, been helpful for you guys and good luck integrating this into your program.